Hey everyone, welcome back to another 31 minute podcast. Here I am with your Lucy Bryce Hutchinson. Is that how you say it? Hutchinson. I never so, say your last so name, least. ever. <laughs> um, mate, I, this is probably uh, one I'm super excited about. Um, I like all of them, but this is like, I, I really want to get into like, um, now, just before we get started on this, you have a highly detailed brain. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and um, sometimes I have to try to get the shorter version because you know too much information. Yeah. So I'm going to try and um, do it in my simple terms. Is that all right? Because sometimes you just you lose me because you've got too much info in there. I know. I know. Well, right? It's the simplicity on the far side of complexity, right? <laughs> all right. So I, I've had lots of people writing questions, but I just want to ask you a few myself about um, like can we talk about weight loss like it really it interests me a lot we're, we're going to talk about how the body works a bit but we're going to talk about weight loss we're going to talk about what i've learned and whatever else so if someone is overweight for instance okay so let's say a lady she's 20 kilos overweight and she wants to get started on losing weight so i'm just going to get straight into this thing yeah right okay. she wants to get started on losing weight but obviously there's, it's not just what you eat, it's like mental and physical and all sorts of things. Like, where do you start? Do you start on, you know, like, cause there's obviously insulin parti partitioning and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, macro partitioning. Macro yep. partitioning, whatever, whatever it is. So like, wh for, one, for one reason, why are they like that in the beginning? Why are they like what? The state so that they're in? They've got 20 kilos overweight. So. So obviously everyone knows lack of exercise, lack of food, whatever. But sometimes the reason I ask this is I've been in and out of gyms for most of my adult life and I've learned more in six months training hard with you or 10 months training super hard mm -hmm. than I had in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. And I think people find it hard to lose weight. Yeah. yeah. Like in general. So whatever it's got. Okay, so why are they like that in the beginning? Where does fat come from? What's well, what's happening with it? Yeah, look, there's a, there's like I guess too. You, you can um, there's a whole bunch of factors. It could be hormones. You know, you've you've got certain stages of their life they're at. Yeah. Um, the choices they've made, the food they put in their mouth, how much it's coming down to energy balance, but but also how well the body functions. Yeah. Um, you know, metabolic demand, these sorts of things on on how fast they're processing food. Could there be a thyroid issue? You know, you've got hormones that can regulate um, the body's function and, and how quickly food's um, processed and metabolized. So how so, do they know this? Well, do they well, need to get tested? Is it, do they need to see somebody that knows what they're talking about? Or Yeah, yes and no. Like the hormone profiling absolutely have to be tested for. But you, you pretty much can just start with, you know, a nutritional guide and, and exercise and go through, you know, to, to endeavor to, to start to burn up the calories find your energy balance and, and start to get into a deficit. But mm. you can t then tell with a template, you know, with, a, with an outline and a template set that's pre-calculated to find roughly where your energy balance sits, your daily, your daily demands, you can then, uh, you know, you're dropping back, you're doing the work, mm. you, you know, you gotta see over a period of time, is that producing the results? And if, if you're doing all those things right, you're putting the formula in place yep. and you're not getting results, then you got to start looking at okay, let's dig a little little bit deeper here. You know, do we get to um, hormone profiling and that sort of stuff, and start yeah. looking at the science and do some testing? But you can do definitely do that at the start. There's nothing wrong with doing that to understand those things. Okay. Yeah. So how does someone work out? Let, let's use me as an example because sure. you work closely with me, and I basically yeah. just follow everything you say. Yeah. So we've worked out that my maintain rate is about three thousand, three thousand three hundred calories a day for me to maintain my body now. Roughly, yeah. Roughly, yeah. all right? So it's like, so that, that's that been a bit of trial and error. You know, like I got too lean a little while ago. Um, well, I well we, it was. We've, sorry to interrupt, but we, we, we've been playing with that to, to keep you from homeostasis, so from finding a level where you'll sit and your body will fight to maintain. So we've yep. been playing with that volume. Plus, obviously I'm not with you 24 seven, so I can't tell <laughs> you what, what, to, <laughs> what to put in your mouth and what not to put in your mouth. But yep. But by having a rough guide and a track to work on, we know roughly where the parameters are that you're sitting in. Yeah. And the other part, that we could, so when I first met you, I noticed that you, you tend to eat a lot of calories. If I had the same amount of calories as you, I'd be 300 kilos. Right. So clearly your, your metabolic rate's quite high, but 
Then we've got to, you know, bring some things in. And one of the first things we did when we started training was was flip up the training to race the intensity. Yeah. So as you can increase the metabolic demand. So now there's more demand coming out. And at the same time, we need to feed that demand. So we're increasing the amount of calories you're actually eating, not overall calories, because you're switching from foods that are that are pre-prepared foods or processed foods, which have got a lot of hot hidden fat, you know, calories in them, yeah. over to a clean diet per se, which is actually volume-wise, it's bigger. But the calorie count is actually lower. Yeah, I'm finding that really interesting. Like we're going to delve. We're going to just so everyone knows, it's going to be over 31 minutes because it's like there's there's a lot of stuff here that people it will literally change people's lives if they listen to this stuff because it's changed mine. I found it really interesting. I'm eating like anywhere from 10 to 15 meals a day, and I'm losing weight. Yeah. And yep. when I say losing weight, I'm losing fat, but I'm yep. I'm gaining muscle. Yep. And it's 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 really. Like I literally, I just got to your house. I just had a protein shake and I just came from all portos and I had a all portos five minutes ago. Yeah. So obviously there's types of food. So how, do, how does a, like, let's go back to the lady example. So how does somebody who's overweight now, 20 kilos overweight, she'd like to lose 20 kilos to get back to a premium. How does she know or he know what is their maintain rate? How do they find that the out? Daily, daily Because energy obviously weight is it. Like when you got too much fat on you, it's just an over, it's an excess of energy, isn't it? Essentially, yeah, it's, it's energy in storage. Yeah, so, so it's in storage. So you, yeah. you're using, you're eating too much, yep. not doing enough to get it out, and it's storing it like that. You're eating more than you need. More than you yeah, need. Yeah, you're consuming more than you need. So what, do they need to go into a deficit for a while? Yes. So, okay, so what, but, what but would that can, be? You can go into defi- deficit two different ways. You can lower the caloric intake or you can increase the metabolic demand. The best way to start out is to increase the metabolic demand and what actually, does that mean? Well, you, your type of training you're doing. So, okay. you know, you, you're getting, like, like we did, you know, we, we flipped up and we, we had to work with, um, you know, time under tension. We had to innovate a few ways around what the constraints that we had. Yeah. Um, normally, they'd measure total tonnage and them sorts of things, how much you're actually lifting, you know, working on to lift throughout your, your exercise. And in my opinion, there's certain types of training which definitely impact metabolic demand more than others. Car- so the, do, you, do you rate cardio? Not really. You don't? Yeah and no. Like cardio has, has benefits, but um, it's, it's, I like to stay, okay, so I what, find, what, what I do find you, what do you think resistance work. Resistance work. Yeah. So, so, is, that, so is that weight training? Moving weight, yeah. That's why they're right. measuring total For tonnage. everyone. Women? So I think so, yeah. Men? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just women will respond differently because they've got a different hormone profile to men. Obviously men are going you know, to accrue muscle and protein accrual a bit easier than women. But yeah. Um, definitely the resistance work is, is, a, is a game changer in that sense. So for increasing metabolic demand, there's um, certain, certain training styles. You know, we, we changed up the tempo. You know yourself, we, we're basically working with higher intensity, yeah. you know, faster it's workouts. The, it's a little one percenters. Yeah, it's all those little yeah. pieces there. But, you know, and normally we'd have progressive loads. So you'd start looking at total tonnage and how much you're lifting over, over a period of time and play with those variables mm. uh, and, and keeping that heart rate up throughout your workout. So you've got um, German body composition training and these sorts of um, workouts are designed, you know, to do that and get the best best results for that. So what, what I'm saying, going back to the question there, was, was increasing metabolic demand, but at the same time switching over to, you know, clean foods essentially. So believe it or not, when you do your calorie count on the clean foods, they're actually lower than any of these processed foods and, you know, typically takeaway foods and all that sort of thing and have a lot, lot more calories in them. And plus things in there that you don't, you're not aware of. They, they you know, they're adding ingredients to and make sugars it taste Sugars and things and, so, yeah, and it's chemicals not, not, and preservatives. Exactly. Which you, you, so you, in the beginning, this is the thing, is not so much to focus on how many calories. Sure, if your calorie, calorie in- intake is off the charts, you're going to have to address that and bring it down. You need to have foods that you enjoy eating because you still got to enjoy the process. That's the other part. So for me, it's making sure you're enjoying what you're doing as you're doing it as well. Mm. I, I prefer to lift weights and push and do do things that are strenuous in that sense. Um, and and you see, you, you bring these pieces together, and at the start, you actually, if anything, you need to fuel, fuel that increase in the metabolic demand. So you need to actually increase the amount that you're eating. Your body's going to find like a seesaw. It's going to fi- try and find homeostasis and protect itself at the level that you're going to find yourself at. So increasing metabolic demand is going to tip it one way. Bringing the calories isn't going to tip it the other way. So you, you, um, you know, you, you'll, you'll reduce your calories, you'll, you'll, you'll see sore one way. You reduce the, yeah. uh, increase the metabolic demand, you actually have the net same benefit, same effect. So you're playing with that, which is the other part too, is 
it's hard to determine exactly what the metabolic demand of will be is. and how much it'll change. You is know, it so they need to sort of feel their way through themselves. Yes, yeah, so and that, so. that's why I said to you during your training. So we're going to play around and you know bring your you know your protein stay the same, fats roughly stay the same. We're going to bring the, the carbohydrates down, and then it's really subjective. The feedback there is how do you feel during your workout? Mm. So we're going to we're going to say okay, you know exactly where do you feel that you're at? Are you feeling? Of course you're going to feel a little bit depleted. But can you contract the muscle and still perform? Mm -hmm. you know, or is that in, impeding your performance? In which case, we're going to bring the calories back up slightly and try and find that sweet spot, but not keep it there too long so your body can find homeostasis and sort of sit there at that plateau. And it's just, just moving those things. And you do a pretty good job of moving your carbohydrates up yeah. and down. <laughs> yesterday, we'll go on about my body scan later, but um, yesterday I went and ate almost a whole block of chocolate. So, uh, but so, like so your, fat, your fats are a bit high too. <laughs> Maybe. There's a reason for it. We'll talk about that after. But there's, um, so tell me, like when, a, when somebody, let's say, uh, I've got a friend who actually, this 20 kilo thing is exactly my friend. Right. So she, I grew up with her. Yeah. And um, we talk often on the phone. And that's the reason I use this example. And she's like, so she's lost two and a half kilos, mm -hmm. but it's been a long, long process. I talked to her yesterday. Right. I said, how are you going with it? She's like, oh, I lost two and a half kilos. But she just walks. Yeah. You know, like she just goes for walks. Yeah. Changes the diet a little bit. Yeah. Look, I've, I've got my thoughts around that sort of thing as well, where, um, you know, because I went through a period there where I recompositioned, lost about 20, 25 kilos of body fat um, and, and did that. Well, 22 kilos, I think it was, did that, you know, for about six and a half months. Um, so, and, and the thing that, my, in my opinion, my experience on that as well is when you're going out and actually doing, you know, the, an event, which is you're going to do your cardio, you're going to liberate free fatty acids into the blood. So you're going to do all that hard work. You need to give it an hour or hour and a half or two hours for that energy to be burned up out of the blood. Right. So, so not eating, which is your normal reaction to going out and doing exercise. Let's go back over that again for a second, okay? Yeah. So for one, is walking good enough? Well, it depends on your heart rate. Right, you know, so, so they, they want to get the heart rate fast up. Fast yeah. walk, slower walk, they, they've got to decide it's, it's on It's really a target heart rate, yeah. And yeah. then there's the debate on, you know, hit workouts, all these different variations of things, but, okay. but so the impact. Let's say a decent walk, right? Let's say yep. someone walks 10 kilometers. I do every couple, couple yep. of times a week. So take about an hour. Yeah, so now, so an hour's walk, fairly brisk, and you're saying you get home, and then what, what well, do you, you do? Well, your body's going to start sending you signals to say, hey, we need to eat. Right, you feel that yourself, yeah? I've been walking with you a couple of times. Yeah. The first thing is, hey, let's get some food on the way back. Yeah. If you've got a lot of fat to burn, in my opinion, it's, it's better to leave it for an hour or if you are going to consume something, like the simple rule is stick to the greens. You know, just consume something that gets you through that period. This is where things like caffeine and that are advantageous or useful because it helps suppress the appetite. So if you're, you're suppressing the appetite through that window and you're not bringing any calories in, when I say see things like caffeine, um, you know, like a, a, an espresso shot or something that hasn't got the milk and all the calories with it. So if, you, if you're, getting, you're giving yourself that hour to burn that up, in my opinion, you're getting the most out of okay. that event and what you've just done, as well as there's other, you know, there's other things you could include. But. So I've noticed, okay, so that's good. Uh, I'll come back to that because I've, no, I've got my meal plan here that Bryce did, and I've noticed that on here, you've got no fat for two hours around my workout. Yeah. So I get up, have my shake with water. Yep. Then I go work out half an hour later. Yep. And then another shake with a protein. few other. Yeah. Yep. So just protein, and then no fats for. Well, got two, carbohydrates. So so we just that's the macro petition. So we're separating the fats out of, around the insulin. Should everyone pump. do that? So, well, yeah. In my in my experience, so that, you know, it's it's it works. Um, you know, whether the science, you know, that's a it whole other me, a whole other debate. Exactly right. The proof's in the pudding. Um, yeah, so, so we, we're, we're stimulating an insulin response, you know, through the foods that you eat with the carbohydrates to shuttle things like um, the aminos in to get the protein accrual, to be able to put on the muscle, um, stimulate the glycogen reloading so that you've got energy for the next workout, that sort of thing. They're happening around in an environment where you're not adding in fat because it's, that's, that signaling is that the same thing. You know, if you've got fats in the system, they're going to want to store at the same time because that's what the, the mm. insulin will do at that window. So you've got a window there where you're keeping the fats out. Yeah. yeah but you're, the other, you're, to, to, to frame that really though, you're sub 10% body fat. So yeah. the rules for you are a little bit different for, like even myself, you know, to get down to that level, you, you know, there's a few things that, that would tweak, you'd have to lay out, uh, you know, to, to, it changes a little bit because yeah, the, the 
pre, uh, sorry, lower than 10% body fat, you really need your carbohydrates. You've got to, you know, mm. be observant of those things. And, and you know, our objective is to get the fat off first to get the condition in place. And then we'll drill down and... So since working with you, I've lost, I've halved my body fat. Okay. We've, we've got more, it right More here, than so half. Yeah. I've got a chart here that I did yesterday. We'll talk yeah. about that. I really want to talk about insulin for a second. Sure. Because it's something that I'm still learning and I'm trying to get my head around it. Just so people can know, I think this has been a, a massive game changer for me once you've sort of directed this. So have I got it right? Jump in whenever. Mm -hmm. So in the morning, you have your shake, I do, with carbohydrates in it. Does that make your insulin start? Correct. And then you go train? What does training do to your insulin? It disposes of it. So, oh, it's not the insulin, so the, so the glucose, it, it will dispose. So insulin's a glucose disposal agent. So it comes in, produces glucose, carbohydrates produce glucose, the insulin will come in and distribute those glucose to where they've got to go. That disposes right. the glucose and brings them down. So, so, so with insulin, sorry, I want to stay on this for a minute. When, you, when it spikes, it spikes because you eat carbohydrates? Correct. Right. And then you train. And then is this why you have a space around your training with no fats? Because there's fats. Yes. So what does fats do to insulin? Well, it's the other way around. Insulin's a transporter. So it'll stimulate lipolysis, lipogenesis. So, sorry. So it'll stimulate the, the basically the transporter of that energy to put it into storage. So, so it you grabs don't, it. You don't, yeah. It's, it's, it, you don't want to store fat in that period so you don't want to add fat to that process so that it's it's taking that and storing it at the time right so, so we separate them out will that make you fat correct okay so if you went out if you did exercise and then went and had an egg and bacon roll yes well you're adding in well, egg and bacon roll because you've got to look at look at what this thing so how much carbohydrates in it so what's the insulin response to the food the fats in with the carbohydrates well, you've had a cake well, the thing is, fats with carbohydrates will slow down the breakdown of, of carbohydrates as well. So it's yeah. not as cl you know as clean as that. Yeah. But we we like I said to drill down on the little one percenters, we'll petition those things out and get them out of that environment so that it's not there when those events take place. It's a cascade of events. So I've always had trouble with this part here, right? I don't I don't now. It's gone. Yeah. Pretty much because I ate chocolate yesterday, so it's a bit there. But I could never get rid of it. Like my abs are always good at the top half yep. and the bottom half. But since doing this, and I reckon it's this insulin thing, they've literally, it's literally gone. I, I wouldn't reduce it to one thing. It's never, it's never well, one, maybe one as well, thing. Yeah, no, it's a whole package. It's a formula. Yeah. And this is the thing. When you get the, like I said, it's a cascade of things. When you get the conditions right and the formula right, and, you know, and you're putting in, in, in my opinion, these, these are one percenters as well. Because I've, I've had, you know, I've, I've done periods where, you know, followed Kuznewski's model which is a high fat um, you know moderate protein low carbohydrate model um, you know going into performance in, into martial arts those sorts of things dropped you know big chunk of weight to get into condition uh, so I've, I've used models with different macro you I, know, I, actually frameworks. Gave, I actually gave them no background you're actually a, is it a third Dan black belt yeah in kung fu yeah, kung fu? yeah. Um, to, to um, essentially like I was saying about the macros things whether it's you know you're drilling the flush out of the pepper is in that um, I've, I've made things work on different models, so I definitely can say that as well. But, um, you know, bring it back to, to these ones where, you know, is it little one percenters? I, I think these things add up. And then when you put it into an order, you've got that, you know, series and cascades of events and set up the right conditions. So, you know, we're stimulating insulin prior to training and people will debate it either way, but insulin prior to training, but what do we drink while we're training? You know, we've got the aminos that yeah, we're we shuttling in. Aminos, so at the yeah. same time, the aminos are contributing to the protein accrual cycle. So it's, it's accruing uh, protein to put on the mass. So we've got that, that anabolic period that we're looking to put on mass. Then Should women be drinking aminos in yes. Yeah, absolutely. Same? Yeah, absolutely. So, and the thing is with, with, look, body image is an illusion. So to recomposition... When I say women, like walking in the park, if they're like my friend, yeah. should she be drinking aminos while she's walking? Oh, well, the, yeah, it's, it's yes and no. Um, there's not, no harm in it. So the, with, with these aminos as well, there's, there's things in there um, yeah, yeah, um, that are going to help keep the system in balance and, you know, get the most out of your system. Mm. Um, so, yeah, look, the benefit of that is probably the, the more metabolic demand, the more stress you put yourself under, the more it's, more it's required. Okay. So, you, you know, if you're someone who wants to lose body fat you're just walking it's probably the most moderate way to endeavor to do that you're really just in, you know 
consuming some calories throughout mm. the day. So mm. you really got to drill down then and get the calorie count right and make sure you're in a deficit. But so is it going to be a slow going if people are just walking like that? Yeah, in my, in my experience, yeah. 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 You really got to I, shock I, your body a bit. I haven't worked with, with women. So I've, I've worked around guys and, and competitive guys and that sort yeah. of thing. So have never really done or had too much to do with with um on, on the female side of things but you know the human body is a human body so are they are they resistance training because i want to go back to what you're saying but resistance training with weight and things is that more beneficial i in, think so in yeah. General? yeah 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 because I, I, I have i have heard some top level physique coaches say cardio is unnecessary yeah and there's there's guys that do preparation you know for stage like, like yeah very credible guys that say they do no cardio whatsoever to yeah. get condition and these are the guys that that they you know, so-called pros and these sorts of things contact to find out what's going wrong with their their, their their prep and their conditioning. So I have to admit, I did a lot of cardio for quite a few years, yep. and I didn't lose any. I, I got leaner in my arms and my legs, but in the middle part, yeah. I d it didn't change anything until I did this. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, look, it does something. It's just like I said, if you if you're going to do something mild like that, is in I think metabolically mild, if there's a term, but um. You've, then you've got to really dial in your, your macros. You really dial in your calories. Bring your calories, you know, you've got to get them on point. You've got to get in deficit somehow. And, and you've also got to enjoy what you're doing. I think mm. what a lot of people find with cardio is that it gets boring. Um, yeah, it way. depends what it is. But there are other benefits to doing cardio. I recommend, you know, people should do it. Like blood flow. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Chemical get, Exactly. Release. Getting getting the system working is, yeah. is, you know, we're meant to move. Yeah. You know? So getting out there and doing something like that. But... The other part of it too is, is resistance training you know shows again and again and again through the people and experiences we've had that it, it significantly increases metabolic demand or from what we're saying just because essentially we're eating the same amount of food increasing that demand and watching the fat come off so that's you know whether that's it's really down to proofs in the pudding but mm. then the question there is well what what's the issue with resistance work you know is that some people say oh i don't, I don't want to get too big well that's that's nonsense and really body image is an illusion as i was saying is that you want to bring the tone in the balance in the symmetry and all these sorts of things you need to stimulate the muscle in order to do that um and as i said that the benefit of of those things is like all these you know we're, you're going to lose body fat you're going to stimulate these, this machine to start burning hotter and faster you know so mm. there's absolutely nothing wrong with with resistance work and lifting lifting weights for women in my opinion so quite often i'll do weights in the morning and then cardio in the other not uh, maybe three times a week cardio in the other yeah it's all right yeah it's fine yeah yeah you should do as much cardio as you can get in like it's a great way to clear your head you, you yeah know, there's, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it just that i think you know ideally you put in some resistance work in in your workouts to in your training throughout your week to to get the most out of that yeah so on the on my meal plan so you got the two hours around training and then in the arvo it's like shakes and nuts and well, fats and you're looking at an abbreviated version of it so you've got it it's split in half there's a fat window and a fat free window right. so your fat free window is around the insulin spike and timing of that which is around your event right so pro you know pre and post workout and then after that, we let that settle down. Look, insulin, doesn't matter what you consume, insulin will come in. It's just the insulin response. It's how much insulin comes in. Okay. Because So when you, you get too once, much... Yeah, once you move out of a range, right? Once you move out of the range, insulin's got to come in to dispose of it, bring it back down. Otherwise, you've got serious issues. So, but then that's the insulin response to the food you start looking at then. So foods like anything green will have a, have a you know, lower response than... You know, flowers and carbohydrates and refined and sugars and glucose and all these sorts of things right so um you've you've got that fat free window that you know the around the insulin pulse the conscious insulin pulse there's a few other things that we throw in there and then you, you've got that fat window where you still need to consume your fats but you put them in around your greens and that sort of stuff to making sure you're getting the rest of that macro mix the ratios that we want to see so yeah so you're just separating fats and no fats Okay, carbohydrates. So really, carbohydrates and fats need to be separate around your training. Insulin and fats. Insulin. So anything insulin that, and anything fats. that spikes a yeah ins significant insulin response yeah. will induce it to that. You, you don't want to have your fats in around that. But fats take quite a while to break down as well. That's why training in the morning after you've you know reset overnight is ideal with this this particular model. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you rate peptides? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a bit of a. Tell, tell me what they know, are. They're an amino acid chain, that bonded amino acid chain. 
Um, what are they? Is it in how they work? Or yeah, like or obviously I, you, I take peptides and yep. they seem to be good. Yep. Um, so well, just, just so this scan, and we'll go on to this. This sure. scan, the guy that did it said my body is better than most 20 year olds. Yeah, sure. Well, so, like, and is peptides responsible for that? Like I said, you've got the backdrop to things is your hormone profile and how your body functions, right? The conditions in which it's found frame the truth. And that applies to pretty much everything we've studied out in that different disciplines. Um, look, when, when you look at, and this is, this is where my interest originally procured around this nearly 10 years ago, was when they're looking at the profile, the, the growth hormone profile as you're ageing and, and the natural profile uh, release profiles of ageing people, there's a correlation there with that and ageing, like a direct correlation. So in, in the, the data and stuff that I, I looked at. So the, the conclusion there was, okay, well, what is this system? How does it work? What's so on and so on. So, and then when you get deeper into it, well, they've developed uh, some patents for some products for amino acids that stimulate your pituitary to release growth, growth hormone. hormone. And yeah. growth hormone being the, the synergistic master hormone works in concert with all these other things. So, you know, and, and then specifically when you're talking about um, lipolysis and, you know, utilisation of fat, um, these, these play an important role. So, you know, they've been demonised a bit because of, you know, sporting Footy interests and, and these stuff, sorts yeah. of things. But, you know, in my opinion, like I said, so they went through the first generation, it was GHRP2 and it went to 6 and then onto Ipermolin. Um, you know, you got this evolution of these peptides as they were developed that they essentially what they're doing was eliminating the side effects or any issues that they had to them. By the time they got to the third generation, they were, they were 100% safe, other than downregulation, which just means you've got an olfactory period which, you know, for your body to reproduce or, or be able to recover. But your pituitary is producing, and from what I read, it was producing 800 times more than you needed. So it's sitting there ready to go, and it's not that it's not there and you're not producing it. It's the mechanism, the ghrelin and the, the other peptides, the mechanism to release it, because it's a three-stage release process. They, that it's, the down, it's the degradation of them systems. So it's like the, I guess, the safety mechanism on, on a gun, the safety mechanism's broken. It's not the bullets aren't in the chamber. It's the mechanisms are broken. So what these do is they, they jump in and they, they mimic those to get that response. And then that triggers the cascade of that to be released. So, so uh, like I take it twice a day, sometimes three times a day, mostly twice. So when you're younger, you get, how many spurts of growth hormone do you get? Well, I don't know. I've read where they could, they have at least one a day, but they could have up to three. So, three. but, but that, that could be, put it this way, when you were 21 or 20, you, you, you bounce back and recovered a hell of a lot faster than what it was like yeah. when you get to 40. <laughs> you notice it, yeah. even like recover from a hangover, for example, you know? So, um, yeah, so it's definitely something changes over time, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So by taking them, do women take them as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it just yeah. makes your growth hormone work when it for older people especially. Yeah, like me, like me, and then so <laughs> it's like, you. but so it just makes would my, would I get one spurt a day of growth hormone by taking this? Well, it depends. See, the thing is, um, you know, f from from what I've read, you you get natural growth hormone pulse when you're asleep. So ghrelin quietens. So um, it's essentially ghrelin rises. I forgot the inverted. Um, Essentially, when you, you fall asleep, you, you, the peptides in your stomach rise, insulin quiets, the pulse happens, typically when you're REM sleep. So all we're doing with this is to mimic those two things prior to bed. So you're taking those, the combination, mm. um, the ipermolin and Mogiarif 129, they call CJC. Um, you're taking those two prior to get that pulse just before bed. So you've got that rest and recovery and rejuvenation whilst you're asleep so you're right. resetting so growth hormone release does that anti-aging helps with yeah a like lot of, lot of muscle yeah. growth nearly, helps with recovery everything. Well, helps with everything growth hormones will grow you from a fetus to what you what you're looking at in the mirror yeah right so yeah it's, it's it plays a role and like i said it's synergistic role with all the other hormones so yeah it's um it's it's a key it's the master hormone so we've got my scan here yep um so with where should people be? Like body fat percentage at the moment, mine's six point six percent. So you've you've literally more than halved that for me. So where where sh where's a good range for people like to be in terms of body fat? Firstly, you halved it. Oh uh, yeah, well you, just, you showed me. You what just to had do. you yeah. just had guidance, right? So, yeah. so so give yourself credit. But 
Look, you, you be where you're comfortable, right, really. Um, you, you know roughly, like if you've someone who's been at varying weights, you know roughly where you feel good. Yeah. Sometimes, like I know myself, I've been through periods that I've put on a lot of, a lot of fat, a lot of weight. Um, you know, down to your, your function, your performance, and, you know, throughout stages of life, your values shift and you get away from what you really should be prioritising, which is should always be first and foremost your health. And, and then, you know, where, sh where should you sit is really a question for you. Mm. Um, you know, for, for most men walking around at 10%, they'd be pretty stoked. Most women about 16, I'd say. 16? So, somewhere yeah, some, somewhere, somewhere around there. But, but like I said, there's no, there's no right and wrong. If you, yeah. you know, it's not... And some of it too, you know, that, that, that when you get into, you know, you talk to them, you, you read stuff around, you know, they drill right down and they emphasise certain things around the process which... You're coming back to how you feel, how you function, how do you feel at training? Like, how's your performance? Are you enjoying it? So, in the process, it's it's you know to commit to these changes, you need to focus on who you need to be and what you're committing to be, and then what you need to do to get what you're going to have. Yeah. And often when we start out, we focus on just what we want to have, and then when we fall over, you you get so fixated. And this is why I don't get on scales. You get so fixated on what you do and don't have that it becomes you've got a negative feedback loop if you're not getting what you want to have. Whereas if you're focusing on who you need to be and what it is you need to do, you're actually focused on the process rather than the outcome. I noticed you've said to me a thousand times, you don't, you don't get on scales, you don't no. pay attention to them, no. um, which I see is right because some days I'll be like three kilos difference by the start and the end. Yeah. Or the well, day three before or four and the start. Four kilos. Yeah. It's just water. Yeah. And so. It's just water, is it? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's sort of pointless, really. As oh, it, it's indicative if for a plan to come back like what you've done here. It's indicative of the results, but it's the same as looking at your bank account. You know, what I mean, you, you dollar thing up and look at it every day. You know how much income's coming in. You know what yeah. your budget is. Yes, check it periodically, but like I'm saying, is that you you focus and you, the pleasure you derive and it should be on the process and and on attaining the person that you want to become and who you want to become so and what it is you do should be in line with who you want to become and then what you have is a consequence from doing those things so you don't focus on the scale because that's a consequence so as well as what's more important do you do people walk up to you and go oh my god what do you weigh or do they say <laughs> you look you're looking good you know what i mean like it's, yeah, yeah, it's, sure. it's irrelevant and yeah. as well as like i said the, the pros that i learned from the guys in the very beginning was it, it's all an illusion and you know, does it really matter? The weights, and they used to say is, man, it's, you're chasing dragons. Like, you, you literally can do your head in with the scale. So, yes. I suppose it's like looking at a share market every day and see what your stock uh, is. is well, just, it's, it's no, it's more than like looking at your P&L. You don't yeah. look at your P&L every day. Of course, you want to look at the fluctuations to determine what's going on. But you detach from the P&L because you've got to look, even, even in trading terms, you've you got to be looking at the next opportunity and, mm. and you've got to be focused on the process. So who do you need to be? What do you need to be doing? And in order to do that, you've got to be at your best and you can't be down about the results that you've just gotten. You've got to move on and look for the new opportunity, new results. You know, so that's what I say. It's coming back to who you need to be. And so the, the, the question of you know, what, what's a perfect weight for someone, that's, that's really a question for them. But then that what you said, what, what you really need to do is focus on well, who do you need to be? What does that look like? What does that feel like? Mm. What do I need to do that's in line with that? And focus majority of your time on those two things, and then you'll have the consequence of the outcome. Because the secret sauce in all this is the thing you have in abundance, which is consistency. Yeah. Consistency comes from that decision of commitment to be that person at that level. And once you get to a level where you have no peers, what are you going to base your reality on? Yeah. So it's your once again, it's you coming back to your consistency of the decision, that, of, of the level of commitment for the person that you want to be for your own reasons. I was going to, while we're here, I don't, before I forget, dieting. So it sounds like to me you don't, you don't like really think about dieting. It's more consistently living in a lifestyle plan. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like every day is like you're either doing it or you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So preparing your meals, knowing what to eat, knowing when to eat it, without being super regimented. You've said to me many times, I've rang you from places and said like, hey, I've got pizza here or there's nothing else to eat. And you're like, knock yourself out, but just don't go crazy. Yeah. So it's like, you got to live properly you as gotta well. You've got to live your life, yeah. So I suppose if it's more about like creating a, a plan for like life. 
Like, yeah, well, because once you're maintaining, it's a lot easier. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's the thing about I think once you understand some of the basics, you can make better decisions. The more information you have, the better the decisions you're going to make. Right. Yeah. So, just spending the time to learn the fundamentals and understand that, and you can then make better decisions for yourself. You know that are right for you. But also, you understand where your track is, and you understand when you're getting off the track. Mm. So then, you know, you can bring yourself back to the track quite quickly but then you're tailoring your your decisions around what you like what works for you yeah and not not some you know some canned you know someone else has written out this this structure and then you've got to build yourself and your personality around that structure so what, fit it, yeah. what's the nuts and bolts of the fundamentals here and how do i put pieces together for me yeah. and what's what's my best version of me look like and what do i need to do to stay in line with that and then the accountability comes in the other side of it where Yes, you hop on scales because that's an accountability. Yes, you look in the mirror. Yes, you do the measurements. There's the accountabilities. Yes, you have your checklist. Are you doing what you set out to do or aren't you doing it? You know, what I mean? am I adhering to my own plan? Yes. So, so bringing it back to that plan is derived from who it is you've decided to be or, or the person you aspire to be at, which you know, people are looking at yourself saying, okay, I want to be like Matt. Well, they're yeah. saying, I want to be like Matt. I want to do what Matt does. Not, I want to have what Matt has. Yeah. That's of consequence for who Matt chooses to be yeah. and what he does. All right? So, you, like I said, you do these things by default. I've already observed that. Is that you'll come out and say, okay, I want to be like this guy. Well, yeah, you just said it. You want to be like this guy, right? Or yeah. be like that. So I don't know if I've got the picture, but I'll show them um, if I can find it. Um, so, you're right. And I, I'm, when you're talking about that, I'm thinking that's exactly what it's about. So, I'll just try and look at my glasses on. But... Um, so I went to Bryce a while ago. And said he wanted to, how do we put this together? I said, you want to be like a racehorse. No, no, you said you wanted oh, to yeah, be a like a racehorse. Sorry, I, said you, I said, you want to be conditioned. It's an illusion. Yeah. You can be 20 pounds lighter and look bigger and heavier and better than you've ever looked. And which is quite the opposite to, to the, you know, most people's thinking thought trains. I said, well, look, it's pretty much like a racehorse. You know, you want to, you want to be... You want yeah. to be in condition. You want to you want to have the look, but you you know you don't want to be overbaked and all the rest of it. He said, "Yeah, I want to be like a racehorse." <laughs> then he's pulled out a picture of Mister <laughs> Un- Mister Universe and said, "Like this racehorse." Yeah, and I'm like, "That's what I want to be." <laughs> but but it's but all of my decisions every day are based on that. So I think you're right when you're sort of saying, "Who do I need to become, or what do I need to be?" That's probably the first thing, isn't it? Yeah. And then saying, "Well, then getting knowledge." Yeah, of course, it. of course. And then creating a bit of a plan. Yep. That sound, you're pretty reasonable as well. It's like none of your plans are like, I don't, I don't walk around at all going, oh, I feel I'm missing out or anything. Yeah. And something that's really interesting that you did help me realize a while ago, you've always, if you want a lower body fat percentage, it's almost like you're walking on the line of being hungry but not. Yeah, it's, it's, fi- like, it's, finding it's like your weird. indicator. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like you're hungry but you're not at the same time. Yeah. It's, it's like you spend all day a bit in that zone yeah like you eat and then you get like not little, quite but satisfied yeah yeah just just yep. right there and it yep. seems to work really really well that and measure your performance in you know under under the demand how do you perform yeah so you know what I mean? so if, if your performance is dropping we need to adjust it yeah. yeah so but you need to create that demand it's the same as anything in life if you create the ma- demand you'll rise to it yeah right so once you start to rise that to that demand and want to push and that's where you yeah you keep those records and you keep yourself accountable but yeah, you then then adjust, and if you're, you're dropping those things back. So what? Well, I think what's important to distinguish too with it, with these results, you know, is that most people look at these phasing of of, of their training. It was going back to the bodybuilders in the '90s, right? And this, for those guys, it was all trial trial and error. They built their knowledge from the ground up, from and you know they were having you know the the competition season and the post competition season. So they were they were going through these bulking phases. And over the years, we, we met one guy in particular who competed who stayed conditioned all year round. And it was the first person that had ever said something that, that sort of radical. It's like, okay, well, how do you put on size but stay conditioned, relatively conditioned and nearly, you know, show ready type of thing, not, you know, maybe six weeks out, all year round. Like, that's, that was an anomaly. So, but as the years have gone on, more and more pros, more and more people have come out and shown that this is how they're doing it, right? And obviously, you know, different things, drugs, different things are, are, are factors. But what's important to distinguish in yours is the body fat percentage has come down as the fat skeletal, uh, sorry, muscle mass has increased, which is we've, we've got that anabolic catabolic window rotating so that 
you're still getting that net gain at the end of the month. So instead of going through a period where you're just going spill over, too many calories, let's go through bulking up, all that, that old world sort of thinking, um, and then stripping it all back and losing a chunk of that as you go, it's what, what's my walking around weight? And you know, can, yeah. can we put on a little bit of this and take a little bit off, not at the same time, but within over the course of a week, can we just put on a little bit here on, on one side and take off a little bit on the other side and then just repeat, 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 repeat. So you get seven months later and you're six kilos you know, more, more muscle or, or to whatever it is, five kilos, whatever it works out to be, and, and a few kilos down on your fat. So you're getting yeah. best of both worlds. I have so noticed time doesn't really matter to you. When you're doing this, it's more about doing it correctly and yeah. it happens when you get there, Yeah. like provided you're doing yeah. it correctly. Like you never say it's to me, in two weeks, this is what it's going to be, or in a month, I'm going to be this. Like, I know we set a goal, I say to you, I, I want to be like this for spring, summer. And you're like, well, if we do this, 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 it'll take us th around there. Like you never really, it's, it's almost like you're more interested in stick to the consistency of the thing. It's the process. Feel your way through it, yep. read it, and then you can sort of measure yourself as you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's slight iterations as well. And then. So how do you rate these 12 week diet plans and stuff? Oh, yeah. I've reserved, my phone. I reserved my comment a little bit on, um, look, any sort of. I don't know, it's, it's templated things. You think programs work, programs work, but it's really down to the process. It's, it's your day-to-day, it's your -day, you know. It's a, it's a life and a lifestyle that you're building and you want, want to visualise and see and experience that every day. Because I could eat lettuce leaves for 12 weeks, every, I'm sure I'd lose weight. Yeah, but it's a, you're, you're putting a time frame on these things and then, then what after 12 weeks, then what? Mm. You know what I mean? It's the same as like setting your expectations and we say, well, how long it is? Well... The, f the thing is, if, you're, if you place an expectation there and it's not met, you know, the formula for happiness is results over expectation, in my opinion, right? And if, if you're, you're setting that expectation, you don't meet it, then guess what? You've got a negative feedback loop. Mm -hmm. Same as hopping on the scales. We can look at you and you can look in the mirror and you can see, am I getting the changes that I, that I need to get? Am I getting the results? Are they showing up? And the main thing is you're staying energized and feeling good about what you're doing. Are you enjoying the process? Yeah. That's, that's the same that as is, the training true. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. If, if you're focused on enjoying yourself as you go, you'll have your frame is right, your lens is right. So you're going into the gym to work out, to get, you know, to unwind and do these things. You're going to do that every day. You're going to want to go back and do that every day. It becomes who you are and what you do. Yeah. And, and yes, you can progressively drill down to the one percenters and change things over time. But the one thing that all comes back to with all this is consistency. Like, in my opinion, bodybuilding is the hardest discipline on the planet. Yeah. These, these guys live and die by the clock. And they, they, everything's meticulous. Like, it's, it's, a, it's to the nth degree. Uh, but, but what I'm saying is that to, have, to, be, to still have a life and still have that balance uh, you know focusing on who you need to be and making sure you're enjoying these comes first and then what you have as consequence of that comes down the order of consequence because if you tie yourself what to, to what you do and don't have you can get caught in that negative feedback loop and then yeah. lose momentum with it you're not as consistent and then the wheels start to fall off and as well as I've noticed because I've done a couple of comebacks and that sort of stuff over the years you can set yourself up for failure right from the start if you come back and constantly measure yourself against previous expectations of what you used to have, yeah, because or other people, yeah, you yeah. see, you've got it. You've got to set your mind up right, which is to okay, visualize what does my perfect day look like? What's my training? How do I feel? You know, I'm getting the results I want to get, and and just repeat, repeat, repeat. So every single day, regardless of which, like I wake up, I, I couldn't tell you what day it is or how it feels because every single day feels exactly the same, right? So. These are the things about setting yourself up to live your best life is, and then to have those things in order. So having that value structure where uh, your health is first, health and well-being is, is first and foremost. And, you know, well-being could be walking on a beach, could be doing anything you find zen, but as well as, you know, to put some, in my opinion, put some load on yourself for physical performance will, will also make you feel better. Mm. Um, and and that, those one, two, go, they, they all go one and the same, but... Um, you know, having that focus right from the start of the day and making sure incorporating that into every day is critical and in, into getting the most out of yourself. I've got some questions that I need to ask you um, that people have sent. But one thing that I did want to ask... Um, so if you're a bodybuilder and if you're a, a young person wanting to start bodybuilding, like Broccoli, 
Well, so he's, Brock's, he's, we've already discussed this. Yeah. Brock, we're going to start a building broccoli project. Yeah. Yeah. So he's 76 it, kilos. <laughs> is it about them eating more calories to begin with? Like, what, what's the start of them? Obviously, going to the gym, learning what to do. One thing that I've learned is technique in the gym is everything. Well, that's... So intent- I've gone all the yeah. way back to, to yeah, back technique to start, again, even though I've been there forever. Yeah. So that's one thing. So they need to sort of that, really... That was around intensity. We needed to get the yeah. intensity right. And to do that, you need to have the right technique so it didn't break down under load. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then do they just start eating more? Well, you, eating more is in... Where do they start? Like start, increasing start the, if you're someone like Broccoli, who's like a, you know, an amazing specimen of muscle... S- start would, by, would he start just eating more? Start by creating demand. Right, because you need to rise to that demand. So it doesn't matter what you eat. You go to the gym, broccoli, or go and do a workout, set out and say, okay, cool. Well, f- first of all, you've got to learn to what to do. How do what I walk in the gym, what I'm going to do, right? But we're assuming you know some about what to do. You've got a program. You need to raise the bar on your performance and start hitting some, expecting yourself to hit some results consistently. And by doing that, you're going to force yourself into an environment where... You're going to need more. Well, that plus your performance is going to suffer if you don't make decisions that are in line with conducive producing those results. Right. So if you're eating crap, you show up, you're going to train like shit. And yeah. you're going to notice that day, well, I didn't train very well today. What happened? Oh, well, I ate this and that, so on. Okay, well, all right, I need to make sure I eat my food. Then because you've got that minimum standard and, in, and um, that, that you just set for yourself with the demand, you've got something to measure your performance against. Yep. So once you've got that mean high watermark, your goal is to keep moving that up, moving that up, and then you'll find that all the things that you start to do, the decisions you start to do, will start to align in that direction. And as much as eating more calories, if, so what if it creates a bit of spillover? Or so what if you're in slight deficit? We're coming back again to how you're performing during your workout. How does the muscle contract? What does it feel like while you're training? Are you depleted? Does it feel like... Does it feel horrible? Yeah. Well, you feel all right. Okay, you're consuming maybe too many calories, but your performance is good. You've got incremental yeah. increases over, over time. Chris Jordan worked out for four years yeah. and then started working out with you. And he literally rang me up like a week later and said, it just feels like he's wasted four years because his technique was just nowhere. Like he just literally yeah. started going to the gym with his mates, yeah. doing his stuff. So yeah. do, do they need to source somebody who knows what they're doing? Well, you've got to start with the basics. That's why I was fortunate in the very beginning to... Um, to to meet uh, some guys that were competing and they we went into the city and started training around guys that were going for their pro cars. So mm. I was lucky that I had you know them as mentors right from the very, very beginning. So you know these guys were to the nth degree of everything. There wasn't a detail missed. You know right down to the, what your form, your intensity. They didn't talk during training. They came to get results. You know they bought their game every day. Um, mm. You know down to what they ate, when they ate. You know and I had, was fortunate enough to pick their brains and annoy them with constant questions on how to make this thing work. Um, you know, so where, like I said, with, with those guys, it's, it's the fundamentals. Like you're from the building blocks of, like I said, first of all, create the demand. So get in there and say, okay, well, I've got to lift this weight. Well, like you've got so many resources now you know, on YouTube and the rest of it's not funny. Like everything you could ever want is, is already, we yeah, didn't even have the internet yeah. then. So we just had people to, to draw from um, and you've got to learn the basics of the movements first and like you're learning now man you've got to have your even right down to your breathing how you yeah, can track the, breathing wrong. the, the, the posture yeah. and position you know the, the biomechanical recruitment of how the movement's supposed to be done um, you know to, in order to be able to recruit correctly and activate that muscle well, then is that muscle actually firing you know do you just drop the weight down and do 500 reps and then see how you feel tomorrow and see if it's actually hitting the, the muscle or where are you sore you know so being prepared to start from the foundation and, and build it from first principles and sort of build it up or find someone that's done all that and shortcut that by employing them. And I, like if, if, if you I had... I think everybody should. Like going through my experience, I'm going to find these questions for you because we're yeah, if, if, running out of time. But yeah. what? Have you got them all? Or you Look, found them all? If, if, you had plenty, if you had plenty of money, you, you, could, you would literally be better but, off. But YouTube. Like I watch Mike Thurston. I watch... What's that guy you like? Tavi? No, uh, watch Tavi, which, which I watch Tavi. I watch uh, well a few of them. I, Ca- even, Callum, Tavi. Yeah, even boys. watching those guys, like they've even helped my technique. 
Yeah. You know, yep. like it's, I'll, I'll go to you, hey, I saw this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can get, you can get very good. There's, there's a lot of, a lot of resources there, man. You can mm. just a couple of clicks and you, you can, you can have it broken down by. by You're free very, most hours. I'm sure you can. You very can credible. People. No, I don't yeah. coach, coach <laughs> anyone. Um, but no, you'll learn more. As I said, look, if, if you could spend, the more time you can spend with people that are versed one-on-one, yeah. the better. And you'll, you'll, so like, for example, if you did three or four sessions a week for four months, you'd learn more in four months you'd probably learn in six or seven years doing so, so one time. day a week so you know what i mean time. so yeah. because you got that frequent repetition you know that that reinforcement repetition yeah. and drilling to things to make like you get everything right that intensity right the form the, everything you've got yeah. you know, all those little one percenters that add up to leaving everything on the floor in that workout and getting the most out of that that you know that that stress and then going away and recovering and, and doing the right things to making sure you you come back at it fresh definitely you hit me with them broccoli we're going to ask Bryce a few questions before we finish first question does your body process the insulin in fruit and veg and dairy plus grains differently and then the next one I just which should you eat for breakfast like which is the which is the best to eat before exercise does it process well look can everyone hear you the the, um how how it processes and I have to look from stuff that I've read, the the fruits no, that they they're, they're essentially saying no, that it doesn't doesn't press the same, doesn't get in. That's not not yeah, not perfect. But um, as far as does the insulin well, say what, what, what again? Like dairy, way? carbohydrates, fruit. Do they process? Do they process? Do they produce insulin differently? No, the insulin's produced, but how it deals with them, well, I'd have to investigate. Well, one's fat. Whether one's it, what you mean milk. by differently? Should you drink milk? Yeah, you can drink milk. Well, it depends if you've you know, if you've got issues with lactose. I, yeah. I don't. I, I don't it doesn't drink, ag- it I don't doesn't drink milk anymore, me. and I, d- I think it's been really good. Well, because you've got sugars and fats in milk, unless yeah. it's skim, and then they use a chemical to skim it. So. Yeah, I used to drink a lot of milk. And now I don't drink any. I, th- I feel better. Yeah. 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 No, I'd leave I'd leave milk out as much as possible if you can. Okay. Next one. It's just down to taste too. See, a lot of foods, and this is the thing I think. Sorry, in in the in the beginning is. We tend to select foods based on taste, mm. right? So it's switching over and getting away from well, your protein from shake t- tasted like rubbish then. Yeah, it well, was like that was disgusting. So I definitely didn't choose that on taste. If if you, you know, you can still make foods taste good, but if you're only ever selecting foods on how they taste, you typically will find they're either you know got a lot of sugar, sugar in them and, and yeah, these yeah. sort of things in them. Yeah. So um, thoughts on intermediate fasting. Intermittent fasting. Yeah, I've, I actually did, um, you know, an intermittent fasting model for quite some time. I've said quite some time, about three months, and I actually really enjoyed it. So this is actually touches on personality types, in my opinion, because for me it's quite good because my, my issue is around, like, like for example, now we're back to training, um, you know, focus. What I find it's hard to actually, once you get away from eating and you, you, you're bringing it down to, you know, you're scheduled, you've got your caloric balance, that sort of stuff. I actually go the other way, where where I start to not eat enough food. So, like you know, in the beginning you're eating too much, then you find it hard to bring it back, and I'll actually swing back the other way. So, for me, what I found with with um, with that model was actually quite good for my personality type because I tended to swing from one extreme to the other, and so I was doing a 36 hour on 36 hours oh, off wow. kind of thing. So I hate fasting. Oh, when I wouldn't say like, fast. It's not. It's not. Or, not yeah. a strict fast. You still have. You I like still fifteen have meals a day. Greens and that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's what I mean. Like, as in. I think what, if I fasted, I'd be like too skinny. No, you'd reload. You bounce back. Really? Yeah. So, but it, it's amazing because you're um, well, food tastes amazing again. Like you, you, you know, I, I sleep. Tends I'm happy to, with it now. It depends on how you sleep. <laughs> so I, I find that when I'm in that groove, I actually sleep better fasted. Yeah, like, right. Which is strange, and then. When I'm back the other way on a normal sort of macro sort of model, I sleep better after I've had certain carbs. But, but yeah, no, some things change there. But no, I, I definitely, I did enjoy it and I can do it. Um, it's just that with that, that model, I had 36 hours on, 36 off. It impacts your training too much because we, without the glycogen reloading, refueling for your workout, you can't do a, a strenuous workout. So you're doing a depleted workout because you're just doing some cardio or whatever. But I like to train intensely more frequently. So it was... Then I was just like, "Well, what's the point? Yeah, I'll just go back to, back yeah. to having more of a balanced macro scenario." And as I said, I've done all these models, and I found they all did work. You know, so it's not that I think I'm not sitting in any camp and saying someone's right or wrong. 
I think they all work. You can make them, but then it's around tailoring things that suit your personality, yeah. as as well as the weather. I think the strengths every situation or every model's got its pros and cons. Where the where the where the pros in that is that you don't have to have as many. You're essentially halving the food your food bill, and you can go extended periods without food. So if you're out on the road and you're out and about, you don't have to eat. And you're used to going periods where you're not eating, so you get that benefit. And you're not out eating. You know, servo bought family blocks of <laughs> chocolate. Violet you know? crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> got in my car yesterday. And he's like, "What's this violet crumble?" <laughs> what are the best forms of carbs, and how much should we eat around training sessions? The best form of carbs? Well, you mean specifically for training? Well, okay, look, I think of a combination. So, do you eat right before training? Is that what you do? Like, oh, you need about half an hour. Half an hour before training, yeah. and you eat carbs. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Or a I shake do, do, and yeah. fruit in it, yeah. and. Some people Oats. like depends. Like you get other people who do, they'll only do fats and proteins prior prior to training. They got different objectives, okay. you know. So Sorry, there's different what's there's, the best there's different camps. And you know, my experience, the best carb that I can eat, the one that my body loves the most, is buckwheat. Like we don't see a lot of it in Australia. Apparently, it's the most commonly eaten you know, carbohydrate on the planet. Uh, but yeah, so my body responds very well to that. That and rice. My body doesn't respond too well to the glutens and those sides. But we, I can still exist on them but it's not not as good but yeah i had the carbohydrates prior to training but prior to training depending on because some of them take longer to, to process and digest than others but like i said you you got rolled oats but you're putting you know um, glucose sugars and that sort of stuff with your rolled oats Is that in it's actually oh it depends you've got dried fruits and that sort of stuff oh, right yeah. but um you've you've got some basically quick acting fast acting quick release kind What's of carbs and a mixture for me in general for me rice rice yeah okay. or buckwheat but i don't buckwheat? eat as much as i should um what is the last question is fasting actually good for you well you there's a, there's a, yeah there's a lot of research to show that and then like you know what's what's good for you is what you can make work for yourself you know what what you you know how you want to piece it together there's a lot of models that work like i said intermittent fasting fasting of yeah, I've got a friend that's did a 38 day fast on that wow. one without it's, you know, just I'm water. I'm hard up so doing 38 minute fast. <laughs> um, that's good. Thanks, mate. That's no been awesome. Um, yeah. I'm sure there's lots of questions that come from this. Um, I've had a few people ask, can you do a meal plan for them? But I think hopefully we've shared enough with them now. We might be able to post this meal plan somewhere. Is that right? Yeah, well, like we'll we can see least we, we're going to put from that. I, th I think we could, what we need to do is just, we discuss that before is to put a booklet or something together because we're going to do a twenty-page book. Yeah, there, ne there needs to be a bit of a format and a structure to it, just so you can get through the principles and understand what yeah. what at least our perspective on those principles is. And then with these, it's pretty straightforward, and you can put in your own. You know, it's a template, so you can yeah. put in your own bits and pieces if you want to follow, follow follow that model. 31 days yeah <laughs> let's make a commitment 31 days we'll have uh you know it's, uh, i don't know 20 pages but around that the small easy book for people to like just, just to lay out the principles create a bit of a meal plan for themselves yep. and a bit of a lifestyle with food thanks yep. no worries at all appreciate awesome. it awesome yeah